Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for Dr. Fate or Black Adam, and like and subscribe to be exposed to high levels of cosmic radiation next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Ben Grimm, also known as The Thing. Not the shape-shifting alien in the Arctic, we're talking about the golem-inspired, super-strong orange guy and founding member of the Fantastic Four. Ben was just a normal guy from Yancey Street until he went to space and got cooked by some cosmic juice. He's definitely not the first person to get high and then end up stoned. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need that hardy exterior and strength that makes the thing so thingy. Next, we need to wait until 4.15 in the afternoon. That's roughly clobberin' time. Finally, Ben isn't just physically durable, he also has an unbreakable will. He's got wisdom and willpower falling out of his butt. I think he has a butt. Well, I guess the super-powered space dust could have removed the whole ass zone from the equation. Like, maybe as a side effect from getting super strength and turning him orange. At the very least, you can't be 100% certain he has a butt. I haven't seen it, you haven't seen it, and you can't prove me wrong. Anyway, stats. Let's do stats. We're going to be using the standard point array. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. No surprises here, constitution is first at 15. The thing is big, and the thing is durable. Strength is second at 14. They might seem like they're in the wrong order, but give me like 48 seconds and it'll make sense. Next is wisdom at 13. If willpower isn't a constitution saving throw, it's probably a wisdom saving throw. Charisma next. Next, he's not the most approachable dude, but he's got a heart of gold, so I don't want it below 12. Dex isn't dumped, it's just a 10. You're not really going to be wonderfully stealthy, and I don't think you'd be a particularly good pickpocket with your big old fingers. Last is intelligence at 8. Ben's an astronaut, but that's just because he's friends with Reed Richards. I'm not saying that he's a total dummy, I'm just saying if your roommate can handle any puzzles and arcana checks, you don't need to worry about it. The thing is a goliath. He starts as a human, but nobody wants to play astronaut Grimm, and he kinda can't go back. Unlike the lizard or clayface, who could be normal looking dudes if they want to. Anyway, this will give us plus two to strength and plus one to constitution, making both of those 16. Goliaths are so big that they get a powerful build, letting them count as one size larger when determining their carrying capacity and the weight they can push, pull, drag, or lift. Your rocky exterior gives you stone's endurance, letting you reduce incoming damage by 1d12 once per short rest. Goliaths are also mountain-born, meaning you're acclimated to high altitudes and resist the cold. The Lower East Side of Manhattan is only 33 feet above above sea level, but Ben is an astronaut. You don't get any higher altitude than that. You get athletics for free as a goliath, and for your background, make up your own for persuasion and, I don't know, survival. We don't really need a lot of proficiencies, so those aren't super important. Speaking of not super important proficiencies, you get two more from being a fighter. Take intimidation and animal handling. You're scary, and you get along with Lockjaw pretty well. For your fighting style, grab unarmed fighting to make your unarmed strikes deal 1d6 plus your strength modifier in bludgeoning damage one-handed, and 1d8 plus your strength if you do it two-handed. Plus, you can do 1d4 bludgeoning damage to anyone you've got grappled. Now you can make sure your enemies really know it's clobbering time. You also get second wind, letting you regain a number of hit points equal to 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action. Chalk it up to your indomitable willpower. More on indomitable willpower in a bit. First though, we're going to jump over to Barbarian to get unarmored defense, letting you go commando without losing too much AC, since that'll set your AC to 10 plus your dexterity and constitution modifier. Now your AC jumps up to 13, which I guess is better than 10, but we're really here for rage, letting you add extra extra damage to your strength-based attacks, you get resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, and have advantage on strength checks and saves. It's harder hits and a harder body. Second level barbarians get danger sense, granting you advantage on dexterity saving throws against dangers you can see. That'll help if Johnny ever goes AWOL and sends a fireball your way, but honestly, I'm not too hopeful when it comes to you passing that even with the advantage. You also get reckless attack, letting you throw caution to the wind and gain advantage on melee attack rolls using your strength during your turn, but you'll make yourself more susceptible to attacks, giving enemies advantage to hit you. You shouldn't mind taking a hit though, especially if it lets you hit doom in the jaw. Third level barbarians get to pick a primal path, and you've Got a lot of competition for the title of sturdiest guy in New York, what with Luke Cage running around, so we better take the path of the totem warrior. The whole nature and animal spirit angle isn't really the thing for the thing, but bear totem spirit definitely will be. It gives you resistance to all damage except psychic while you're raging. Just don't fight the X-Men, they're good guys. Back over to fighters, second level fighters get action surge, that lets you make an additional action once per short rest, so you can really lay down the hurt or close the gap between you and someone who's in need of some clobbering. 
Third level fighters get to choose a martial archetype, and we're gonna go with Rune Knight to get a bonus proficiency in Smith's tools. Might need to patch up that spaceship. The real draw of the subclass is Rune Carver, letting you pick some runes to give you bonuses and extra options. At this level, we'll get two, but as we progress, we get more. For now, pick up the Frost Rune for advantage on animal handling and intimidation checks, and the ability to invoke the rune once per short rest as a bonus action to make yourself even sturdier for 10 minutes. That'll give you a plus two bonus to all strength and constitution checks and saving throws. The Cloud Rune will give you advantage on sleight of hand checks, not really useful, and deception. So if you wanted to tell people you're the human torch and that Johnny is the thing, they might believe you. Probably not. More importantly though, you can activate this rune when a friend gets hit by an attack to force their aggressor to instead deal damage to someone else within 30 feet. Pop the rage, then when Reed gets hit, tank the damage for him instead. Finally, you get Giant's Might. Letting you use your bonus action to become large rather than medium, you get advantage on strength checks and saves, and you can deal an extra 1d6 damage with your unarmed strikes. So now your punches are the equivalent of a great sword dealing 2d6 plus your strength, or when you're two-handing a punch, it's 1d8 plus 1d6, which is a greater sword. Fourth level fighter is our first ability score improvement, and boy did it take us a while to get here. We should really boost that strength score so you can hit harder. If you tell someone it's clobbering time, you need to effectively clobber. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you attack twice instead of once with your action, and you can quadruple it with action surge, which I think is fitting for a member of the Fantastic Four. Sixth level fighters get another ability score improvement, this time bump up your constitution to increase your AC and HP and bring it back on par with your strength. Seventh level rune knights get runic shield, letting you invoke one of your runes to protect an ally. When a creature you see is hit with an attack, you can make the attacker re-roll their d20 and use the new result as a reaction a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus every long rest. Use this to protect your squishier friends and undo any crits that enemies manage to get. You're so tanky you don't even need to be in the way to prevent your pals from taking damage. Maybe you're just shouting a classic New York style zinger at Dr. Doom. Hey, Victor Von Dingleberry, you're a real metal-faced moron. I'm walking here. You also get to pick another rune at this level, and we're going to grab the hill rune to get advantage on saving throws against poison and resist poison damage. That's just another way that the thing is the hardiest guy in town. You can also invoke the rune to gain resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for a minute in case you've run out of rages, but you still don't want to be the clobbered one. Eighth level fighters get another ability score improvement or feat. We'll grab the resilient feat to boost one of your ability scores by one, wisdom, and and gain proficiency in wisdom saving throws. If I could, I would make men even more wise with future ability scores to be the maximum will-powered man, but unfortunately other scores are going to be more important, so this is the best we're going to get. Ninth level fighters get indomitable, letting you reroll a failed saving throw once per long rest. Use it on strength, constitution, or wisdom saves to be as unbreakable and unbeatable as possible, though you can only use it once per long rest for now. Tenth level rune knights unlock a great stature, permanently making them taller by 3d4 inches and making your giant's might damage 1d8 instead of 1d6. You can also grab another rune, grab the storm rune to be immune to surprise so long as you're not incapacitated, and you'll get advantage on arcana checks. Hanging out with Reed and Sue for long enough means you're probably going to pick up some things here and there. If you invoke the storm rune, you can really get your head in the game and use some of your communication skills with those around you to become a well-oiled supervillain fighting team. If a creature within 60 feet of you makes an attack roll, saving throw, or ability check, you can use your reaction to make them roll the dice with either advantage or disadvantage. You will also count as a creature that you can see within 60 feet of yourself, so you could use it for you. Help your team avoid hits and get crits, or give yourself the extra push you need to really put Galactus in his place. 11th level fighters get another extra attack, letting you make three attacks instead of one with your action, or up to six with an action surge. That doesn't really fit the whole four motif we were going for, but it's so much of an improvement, it doesn't really matter. 12th level fighters get our fourth ability score improvement. Cap off your strength to be the ultimate clobberer that you can be. 13th level fighters get another use of Indomitable, making you even more of a fortified fella, ensuring that even if you do fail a saving throw, no you didn't. 14th level fighters get another ability score improvement, and this time we're capping off our constitution score for maximum hit points, con saves, and one last boost to the AC. Your rocky hide makes you one of the most durable men in the world. Now you've got the stats to prove it. 15th level rune knights become a master of runes, letting us get twice as much out of our runes by invoking them twice per short rest instead of just once. That's another pseudo rage, another hit your teammates might not take, another 10 minutes that your strength and constitution mods become plus seven. Speaking of, you can pick up another rune at this level, and we really don't need any more for the thing, but if you want to charm an enemy for a minute by forcing a wisdom save, you're in luck. That's what the stone rune does, and you're a stone man. The charmed enemy has their speed reduced to zero and is incapacitated as they're suddenly sleepy or something, maybe too intimidated by your rock-hard abs. 16th level fighters get one last ability score improvement or feat, and if we want to stand up to galactic threats, we need a galactic pool of hit points. So take the tough feat for two HP every level you have, 
have and every level you get after this there's only one level after this so 40 40 total our capstone is the 17th level of fighter for an additional action surge and one more use of indomitable making you one of the most dangerous fighters in the marvel universe you can take people down before they even figure out how to hurt you now that we've hit level 20 let's figure out how viable this build is first you've got capped strength and constitution and some extra assistance from your runes to make sure you're dishing out damage and taking damage like a big boy you've got around 270 hp but since you can reduce most damage by half it's basically 530 and that doesn't even include second win. You've also got great wisdom saving throws and indomitable to re-roll them. It's a really common saving throw and you've got the willpower to power through. Finally, you've got a lot of great boosts and buffs available to you and your party thanks to your runes, letting you really shine as a support if you want to. For cons, if we went all the way to Barbarian instead of going to Rune Knight, you would have had a permanent 24 strength and constitution score. That's a permanent plus seven to checks and saves. You've also got low intelligence, meaning you could easily get duped by illusions or other tricksy folks. Finally, your not so great dexterity score means that your AC isn't as high as it could be unarmored. But the thing has so much HP, it doesn't really matter. You're not gonna get out smashed. You are going to smash. Go out there, make the bad guys regret their life decisions and show the world why Marvel's first family isn't to be messed with. Just make sure you keep your eye on the clock if it's no longer clobbering time it might be doom o'clock thanks for watching if you like the video subscribe for more we make two videos every week join the patreon to vote for dr fate or black adam and sub to two lock and mango for more two lock fun